is entering the market. This one from Highland Capital Partners, uh, launching the $275 million Highland Transcend Partners SPAC, uh, targeting disruptive commerce, digital media and software. Let's bring in Bob Davis, partner at Highland Capital Partners uh, and former CEO of Lycos. So, Bob, thanks so much for joining us. Good to see you. It's great to see you. A pleasure. So uh, the list of what you're targeting, uh, disruptive commerce and media and, and the route in which you're doing it, a SPAC, both of which uh, kind of been fairly hot of late. So, so to what extent or, or what would you say to people that, that ask you, are you a bit late in the game? Is the market a bit toppy? Oh, I don't think we're late in the game. If anything, I think we're early in the game. We have a sea change underway in the way companies list. It, it just makes so much sense for any company that's public market ready to think about SPAC as a good alternative. I, I think, if anything, we're on the front edge of this curve. And $275 million, uh, to, you, you're investing in that personally as well? We are, yeah, for sure. Yeah, the uh, partners at, at, at Highland, as long as our, our great colleague, Ian Friedman, who's our CEO of this venture, uh, are all off to the races with it. Yeah, and it's, it's personal capital that is in the SPAC that's uh, the at-risk capital. But there are some who worry, Bob, that, that the SPAC model might not be all rosy, especially for retail investors, which could also ultimately get hurt, uh, not knowing some of the risks, not not perhaps having the same amount of financial disclosures or levels of protection like underwriters that usually happen in the IPO process? How do you yeah, defend it? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I think it's it, that's the core of it. I, I'd say just the opposite is how it plays out. I think SPAC provides a, a lot of additional protections you know, otherwise find. And investing of any type is risk-based. We know that. So is there a risk? Of course there is. There's a risk in SPACs and there's a risk in equities and there's a risk in bonds, risk in anything we do. But when you think about what a SPAC does for an investor, it allows for increased disclosure flexibility compared to a traditional offering. It allows quicker price discovery than you could ever have in a, a traditional offering. That's to the advantage of the investor. It allows certainty in terms of pricing structure for management teams. So rather than going into this wonderment about what my IPO price might look like, uh, a SPAC gives us certainty of pricing. And then going in, and he, his to me is maybe the most fundamental, you know who the investor base is. So as a management team, I, I come in with blue chip investors, and I, I, I know that clearly, or I don't. But I'm going to look at the investor base of that SPAC and feel enthused about that or not. And I, I think there's a much greater degree of comfort and a greater degree of certainty that we find around the SPAC market. And I would never encourage, for instance, we have a broad-based portfolio. I wouldn't tell any of our companies to say SPAC is the only way. But I would say SPAC is a really good alternative today. To, to consider as well. Maybe it's a traditional IPO. Maybe it's a direct listing. Maybe it's a growth round. Bob. Maybe it's a stack. But so it's, I guess it's good to know who the, the investor base is, but you, you don't really know much or as much about the company, which is the point. I mean, how do you make sure that, that you're getting into a DraftKings and not a Nikola, which has gotten crushed? And now there's all sorts I, of fraud I, allegations. I, I, I think you know more about the company than you would on a traditional offering because, again, the S-4 allows for greater degrees of disclosure than you would otherwise see. So I think you know an awful lot about the company going into it um, uh, underneath this back umbrella. But anyway, we've been around for 33 years at Highland. So we're qualified investors. We've, we've done a great job with our – we've served on 115 boards across our – the people involved in this SPAC, 23 of which were public. So we have, a, we have an, an, I think, an enviable track record at Highland in terms of delivering to the marketplace. So would there be, could there be a bad actor in a SPAC? Of course there could. Could there be a bad actor in any equity? Of course there could be. But, you know, we're a very stand-up organization and have a long, long history of, of uh, market delivery. Bob, what about the, the target companies you're going to be looking at? Are you worried the market is a bit stretched at the moment? Uh, market is always... Uh, uh, a, a concern for anything that we look to do, always would be. But we're not market time, is, and, and we, we never will be. It's not what we're about. What we'll be looking for is the best company in the sector that we can bring forward. So we're looking for public-ready companies. I emphasize that, public-ready companies that we can deliver to the marketplace. And the overall market fluctuation, so if the S&P is at 3,600 or 2,800 or 4,200, doesn't really change our course uh, at all. It may affect the value at the time of the, the uh, offering, but it doesn't change our course. Well, you know, we've got, you've got a strong track record with a lot of exits, including the latest freshly from, from Nestle. Bob, we'll keep an eye on it. Thank you for joining us to discuss it. Thank you. Great to Bob see you guys. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.